all right so in the prior recording to this one i would have shown how to install window builder in your eclipse ide now window builder is very useful when you're creating graphical user interfaces in java all right so for this video i'm just going to do a quick start demo just to show you can create a gui application and for this example we'll be doing a login form right so i'm going to go to file then new then java project i'm going to call my project j gui click on finish but just to note if you have create module in for that java file check please uncheck that then click on finish all right now i'm going to add a j frame to my gui project so i'm going to right click on my project name go to new and i'm going to use window builder to add the j frame or to add the form to my application now just click on other you'll go to window builder once you have it installed you should be seeing window builder here then under window builder you're going to go to swing designer and then under swing designer you're going to select j frame click on next give it a name i'm going to call it j login then click on finish now some code was generated for us notice this line where it says that the j login which is the name of my class it is inheriting from the j frame class so j frame is a built-in class in java and then our application is inheriting from the j frame all right so the extends here means that j login is inheriting from j frame now at the bottom of your screen you should be seeing source and you should be seeing design now if you click on design it will bring up our j frame for us all right so this is our j frame we'll turn this into a login form in a few minutes all right so i'm going to click on my frame and i would have highlighted my content pane i want to set the layout for this to absolute now the properties if you look at the properties it is currently the layout is currently flow layout but i want to change that to absolute layout i find it better to work with absolute layout um, so under layouts right what you can do on the layout you can click on it and then just click on your your j frame and it will set the layout to absolute now because we're doing a login form i want to grab a few components so i want to grab two labels so i'm going to scroll down to components i'm going to grab a j label i'm going to just expand this a little bit and for the text i want to change the text to username all right so what we can do under properties where it says text it is now saying new label we can change that to user name and that will change for us i'm going to add another j label and again i'm going to change that to password all right now there are other editing that we can do in terms of changing the font size and the font style and so forth but for now i'll just leave it as is just so that we don't drag this video out too much all right now another component i want is a j text field for the user to type their username and i want a password field for the user to type their password 
right so we're going to go to the j password component and add that to our to our form as well so it says j password field we're going to grab that and place it here let me just expand that a bit bring this down a little all right all right it's a little bit better for me now the next thing i want is a button so still on the components you'll see j button i'm going to grab a button and i'm going to place it here now for the button i'm going to change the text to login And again, we can style this however we want to, you know, change the button color, so on and so forth. But, you know, again, keeping the video as short as possible. Now, anything you want to change about your text, about your fields, whether the password or the text field or even the button, you just click on the component and go to properties and you can give it a new variable name, you can change the font style, you can change the color and so forth. All right, so what I want to do now is to add some code behind the login button. So when we click on the login button, it will log us in to our application. All right, now we want to set an action event on the button so that when we click it it carries out the action we can do one of two things we can double click on this button which is how i usually do it or you can decide to right click on it and add an event handler and you can decide if you want the event handler to be just a, a basic action event where an action is performed keeping it simple though you can just double click on the button and it will take you to the source code and it will take you directly to the button All right so for this um, button i'm going to add some code so i'm going to create a string variable and i'm going to call it your name for username i'm going to create a, another string variable and we're going to call it pass for the password all right so it's very important to know the variables that are attached to the jtx field for the username and the j password field for the password now what i mean by that is we're going to go back to the design click on the text field for the username and we're seeing where the variable that is being used is set as text field all right so i want to change that to something that i can remember so i'm going to call it txt user so that i can remember and i want to do the same thing for the password i'm going to change the password variable to something that i can remember so I'm going to call it txt pass. All right, so it makes it easier for me. Now, those variables that I just set on the text field for the username and the password field for the password, I'm going to go back to my source code and I'm going to set the uname variable equal to txt user dot get text and what this will do is whenever the user type their username in the text field we will get that text and store it in this username variable I'm going to do something similar for the password now for the password we'll be using the 
get password method. So let me show you what that is. So it's txt pass dot get password. All right. Now, if you notice, we have an error here. So I'd have to make some adjustment in terms of how I am utilizing the pass the get password method. You cannot use it the same way as the um, the get text method. Now we could use the get text on the password as well, but that way of doing it has been deprecated by Java and it's not supported or it's and it's not encouraged. So to fully make this see the password and store the password in the pass um, variable, I would have to make adjustments to this. Oh, by the way, I did leave out my equal sign, which is most likely why we got the error on the pass. Now, if you notice, the error switched to over here. Now, what I need to do is type string dot value as the value of method that will be using so what I'll do now is I'll cut this and place it inside our value of method alright so that will now take the characters that are typed in the password field and get those string values and store it in the pass variable that we created here. All right, so that's good to go. Now the next thing I want to do is to create out the if statement. So I'm going to say if the username Let's say username dot equals so equals can operate on our string variables. So if the username is equal to let's say admin and let's do something as well for the password. So let's say and pass that equals and let's set the password to a b c one two three right so for us to log in the Username typed in must be equal to admin and the password that is typed in must be equal to abc123. Now, it's still our application what must be done if the username and password is correct. So if it's correct, we're going to add j option pin. So what we'll do is we'll have a dialog pop up saying that you would have logged in successfully. All right, so G option pin dot, oh, I need to import the J option pin class, or let me just import the package for it. So I'm gonna say import, Java X dot swing asterisk. So the J option pane class can be found in our swing package. All right, so what I want here is to say show and what I want is a message dialog box. So let's say show message dialog. 
Alright, so for my dialog, I'm going to set the peering component as null. And my message will say login was successful. Now this is string, so we need to put it in quotation. So if we say login is successful or was successful. Now if the username and the password does not match, let's put an else. So let's say else. Let's do and I'll just copy this. And we'll make it say it was not successful. Right? And that is basically it. We could put another L saying that something went wrong and so on and so forth. But that is basically it in terms of um, the code behind our login button. Again, not to draw this out too long. Now, what we can do in the future is to connect a database to this login form which means that the username and the password will be coming from a database instead of it being hard coded behind the button all right so let's test our application so again it's not looking all that fancy we can you know make adjustments but just to show you how to create a basic GUI application that's the purpose of this video and just to round it off by putting some code behind our button. So let's run this and see if it actually works. All right, so this is our login form. Username is admin, password, ABC123, click on login. And it told us that login was successful. Now let's change the password to, well, let's change the username to something else. So let's say maybe test user login and it said login was not successful, All right? So that is it for our video. Um, I would have covered again or to create your project, um, add your JFrame to your project, add components to your JFrame, and then add some code behind the button of your login form. All right, so that is it. So remember, install Window Build Life. If you don't have it installed as yet, I will link that video to this one, and then you know, practice creating your forms. Start by creating this simple login page sorry this login form and you know see what else you can you can do in terms of creating graphical user interface All right so that is it for this particular video